right. Hello, welcome to Flourish Fridays, the first one of this half term. I'm Miss Charmer. And I'm Mrs. Tuxford. And um, so it's a lovely sunny day today and really nice to have a feeling of spring. And I hope that you watched Mr. Ward's assembly on Monday because he was talking about spring. He was he was um, doing his assembly from from outside and he was talking about this term and the focus on growth, improvement and excitement, which is what spring's all about, isn't it, Miss? Yeah, and it's exactly how we're feeling. I mean, I woke up and I'm looking at the sunshine and I just think what a beautiful place to come into being in school with the sun shining like this. So we can't wait to have all the students back on site. Yes, I think there's going to be a mixture of feelings that people are experiencing and excitement surely going to be one of them. Um, and maybe some nervousness and anxiety because that various people have not been in school for various amounts of time, you know. Um, so you've got a date, haven't you? What's the date for hoping for getting all the students back in? So the date is the 8th of March, although tutors will be in touch to um, kind of organise more personalised transition programmes if there is anxiety around coming back in um, and to give you more details. Mr Ward's going to be writing to parents again um, today just to give more information on how it's going to look. So um, 8th of March, we are hoping to have the majority of students back in, but we will work around the students. We know there's going to be anxieties. We know people um, will be a bit worried about where they're going to be, they've seen their friends again and so you know talk to your tutor get your parents to talk to your tutor and we will design a transition program for you so hopefully by easter everyone should be back in full time fingers crossed but we'll adapt for you guys yeah and it's a, it's going to be a shorter term as well because easter's early this year isn't it around third and fourth of april so um miss yeah, i think we've got about three and a half weeks yeah that's so it that's it. So I think people will have a varied, you know, experience in that three and a half weeks. And maybe after Easter, things will feel less anxious for people. Yeah. Let's see. So this term, this half term, um, the focus is on uh, your well-being still. But we're thinking about our British values this term, aren't we? And um, I don't know if you remember them, but there's uh, there's a hand there on the screen. And also it will be in the newsletter just to remind you. And we're going to look at um, one of these a week with our Flourish Fridays and how it ties in with your well-being. So this first one, we're going to look at the theme of individual liberty. And um, I've just posted on the school Facebook page a YouTube video made by some uh, older students from another place about what does liberty mean to you? And these older students are from all different countries. And what's really interesting is listening to what it means to each of them and how common <clears throat> the themes are across all these different countries. So do have a watch of that and, um, and post your comments and thoughts, because this is something that you're going to have the opportunity to discuss, aren't you, in tutor groups and in, and, and in the assembly as well, Miss Tuxford. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's something that um, with the pandemic at the moment, it's something that's kind of come into question quite a lot, individual liberty. And, you know, are we being stopped um, being able to do certain things and our rights? So it's a really hot topic. Um, and that's why we thought it'd be really interesting to talk about, especially coming back into school and, you know, having yeah. to adapt to maybe some changes, different rules, different ways of working. So it's a really good topic to talk about. Yeah, it's really interesting, isn't it, that the common themes in that video I was just talking about, which I'm hoping people will watch for themselves, the sort of common themes that came out of that was that everyone agreed that individual liberty is about having that freedom of expression, to live your life as you choose, by mm -hmm. your own rules, having freedom kept coming up. Um, few people talked about social responsibility, which is about making sure that your individual um, rights don't actually harm anybody else and mm. their individual rights and that's kind of a, where we're at at the moment with having to think about um, new rules and new measures and things that have to happen in school to keep everybody as safe as possible. Um, yeah and one of the things that comes down to that and I think um, you know that me and Miss Charmer were talking about is even down to wearing masks 
it's it's down to making sure you maintain social distance the hand hygiene side of things you know they are um something that's going to keep you safe but also they're socially responsible because they're going to keep your family safe they're going to keep the rest of the school community safe so we are a community so i like to think of us as a family and so things that you might do to keep your mum and dad and your brothers and sisters safe you i'd like to think that we all work together to do the same thing for our school family Absolutely, absolutely. And I think everyone's got so used, haven't they, to doing all of this at home and in their own small bubbles within either in school for those children that have been coming into school and working in bubbles, or for those that haven't been in school and have, and their bubble has literally been within their mm. own home environment. So to then transfer that into a school, the school environment where you were hoping to get a lot of students in, if not everybody, potentially, it might bring up some unexpected feelings or stresses or emotions about that and I think what we're going to talk about in a minute is how the school and how yourselves can manage that. Um, I think also we'll talk a little bit about this discovering opportunities and acting on them and achieving my full potential because mm. that's yeah, been really definitely. hard hasn't it it's been really hard because we've been so limited um, in what we are, what we can act on and what we can do to discover opportunities to grow and learn. Yeah. And actually, and a lot of people might feel that they're not allowed to achieve their full potential at the moment, whereas actually, you know what, every opportunity um, you can show potential and even down to looking at the um, exams being cancelled, you know, that's a situation we've got to turn the mindset and we've got to think actually every every problem turns into an opportunity and and each opportunity opportunity we take to show our full potential so you know i'm going to be putting the positive spin on everything here i think you know that's what like. that's exactly what's needed as well and i think it's realistic though positivity isn't it it's because um, yeah. at northeast north the northeast environment uh, is something that a lot of people have not allowed to, been allowed to 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 go and experience so maybe they've forgotten that um you know there are opportunities in every situation and maybe they've forgotten that positive kind of um growth mindset that is all about northeast so it's good to have that miss tuxfu <laughs> It is. And I think, you know, it will it will grow with with having everybody in there. So, oh, yeah, we would like to, for um, students to have the opportunity to discuss some of these topics, wouldn't we? What are they what are the different ways they can do that? Well, I think one of the best ones is actually within your tutor groups and your um, tutor time. Every every tutor time should give you the opportunity to discuss how you're feeling, how things are being affected. Any question you have for your tutors that's causing you any anxiety, that's what we're here for. So those opportunities and when you come back into school, we're going to make uh, more of those opportunities, because I think at this moment in time, we've we've had to lead such different lives. I think it's really important we communicate and we talk and we share our experiences with each other and we question about some of the difficulties and we look at ways of how to manage that so yeah definitely tutor times will be your main one yeah and I think it's really good if you can help yourself to reflect it can be quite hard to know where to start with how I'm feeling and what I'm thinking and I think it can be helpful to sort of try to think about how you're feeling and thinking about being back in school and how that might impact on, on what you do and how you might behave mm -hmm. in school and um, and what support you need in order to manage that. And I think that's a really good starting point. Definitely. Um, and that leads on nicely to the right to express myself. So, you know, the right to self-expression is really big in North East. Um, I think there's a, you know, it's a wonderful environment to be able to explore who you are and how your differences and your similarities to other people. And you mentioned earlier, Miss Tuxford, that some students might not be comfortable with new rules and restrictions and measures in place. Definitely. And I think, um, you know, one of the one of the rights to express yourself is really important. You know, I absolutely hate wearing a mask. I'm going to be honest with you all. I find it really claustrophobic. I find it really uncomfortable. However, um, and I, I'm quite happy to express myself about that. But at this moment in time, I know it's part of my social responsibility because I know that I've got a, a wider community to keep safe. So you should be able to always express yourself. Um, the best way to do that is is with with the adults and your safe adults around you because they are there to support you and to help you 
work through these things and also um you know with things like wearing masks and struggling with social distancing we'll be there to prompt you and remind you all yeah the time. and i guess it's about knowing that it's everybody's in the same position it's not just students it's staff too and any visitors that come into school will also have to follow mm -hmm. completely new rules um what's your experience been of i mean um over the last year because it's been a year now hasn't it since the first announced yeah. that it which happened in march last year um and each with each term there's been new rules and restrictions which have been government led they've not just been the school deciding to do things differently each term it's been you yeah. have to follow haven't you the rules that are laid out by by the government and the local yeah I'm I mean, one of the big things, Miss Chalmer, is actually, you know, we all these rules come down from the government and so their guidance and we follow the guidance through our risk assessment. So we we assess how risky certain situations are and that's how we manage and we put a plan together for in school. But yeah, everything is actually government advice, which a lot of it is researched through science as well. So it's not just someone going, oh, I've got a great idea. Let's wear masks it's actually it's evidence and it's research so we we always kind of follow that guidance because they're, they're the ones that recommend and have researched and they know what's good in practice now we know our, our students at northeast do have difficulties with certain things and wearing a mask might throw up even more concerns with um, coming back in but that's where the communication with your parents and tutors is going to be really important because as always we take each student individually and therefore it will be down to what we can do to support them and we will work we will work that out for the individual student as opposed to just blanket this is what's going to happen but i think it's more about education and i think it's really important of if people understand why something has to happen or why something's important and to feel that sense of social responsibility as well yeah so uh understand i think that's brilliant and understanding that you know why the rules are there is is yeah. part of that isn't it being able to to follow them as well so Definitely. if you are feeling uncomfortable with what's happening or what you're worried about even before march the 8th please speak to somebody so that the school can really look at how to support you in the best possible way so that you're feeling more comfortable um I think one of the things that keeps coming up from the students um, that we talk to at the moment and having you know communication with regularly is that a lot of them are feeling really anxious about being in a suddenly in a busy environment mm -hmm. again and we've and, and we've all been really you know cooped up a lot at home with only being able to see our, our family bubbles and things and for some students might have been in school they might be the only student in their bubble or there might have been only two or three so what's your advice on how people might um what to expect from that yeah. and, and also how they might manage that Miss Tuxford? So one of the big things at the moment is we, we need to keep the bubbles because obviously they keep people safe. The whole point of the bubbles is to stop mixing contact between people. Um, so you can kind of control, they're like control measures, if you like. Um, one of the big things that I think is really important is we, over the next three and a half weeks, when you guys come back on the 8th of March, it's going to be about getting used to school again. It's going to be about socialising with your friends, opportunities to get outside, opportunities to talk about experiences. You know, academic subjects will be mixed in with that. But actually, at this moment in time, everybody's been through so, so much that we need to we need to give ourselves space and time to come back into school and to regulate ourselves with it within the new school rules you have your safe people around you and you will be in groups with those safe adults and it's the opportunity to talk i think is really important but we're going to be outside a lot if the weather holds out yeah. that's what i'm hoping yeah um which will be brilliant because you know that's absolutely great for everybody and we, we've all been indoors way too long now haven't yeah. we yeah and and glued to screens um and what 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 might um you expect from how that might impact on students behavior and social communication initially what? well i think social communication is a really interesting one because actually you know when you're only communicating through um a, a screen or through technology you the certain communication skills which sometimes can be a bit lost so one of the biggest things that i would like to see is actually i want those screens away for a little bit of time i want us getting involved in um practical activities in being outside with talking to each other and that'll be um very led by your tutors at the time 
we'll be sitting down and having discussions on on different matters looking at um you know different rights and rule of law and all the british values so there is going to be that opportunity now behavior as you know it's we we view behavior as communication so we know something's not quite right what we really want to try and instill in this next three and a half weeks when you come back is actually we switch the way so behavior becomes um the talking side or um, being able to communicate as opposed to communicating by maybe uh, disengaging from a lesson or walking out of a lesson we want to switch it that actually it's that communication is is positive and actually we're, we're trying to work with a way to communicate yeah and um, i think we've, we've always noticed haven't we that at, even when people have been off school for a long time around the summer holidays that it can take yeah. a while for that kind of social communication behavior all to settle down again yeah, and always for people for students to remember how to self-regulate and how to use the different strategies that they that they use in school so we're going to just go through a few of those in a minute just to yeah. start reminding people of what they are um, and not to give yourself too high expectations just try and take it gently and be kind to yourself as well and that's where the transition programs are really going to help you they you know we want them to be worked around what's going to suit you best are you going to know you're going to struggle coming in full time all the way through to easter do you need a gradual integration so we we will adapt it for your needs um obviously for your needs and the needs of the students around you and in terms of that approach um of being very individualistic as much as you can around each student which is amazing how northeast always managed to do that so well um, some students might feel extra anxious or stressed by the actual education side of things, their academic progress. There might be a lot of negative self-talk that's been going on about either being, you know, not good enough or behind everyone else or not able to manage um, those relationships or, or struggling with friendships because it's been such a long time or, um, you know, the changes to exams this year and feeling ready for whatever September might be for them. So what's your advice on that? So I read something really fantastic the other day, and I'm not going to read the whole, actually, I will read the whole thing out to you. So it's, um, it's a message from a child and it says, don't tell me I'm behind. Don't tell me I'm held back forever. Don't tell me I need longer at school. Don't tell me I'm lost. Tell me I can do it. Tell me you'll help me. Tell me you believe in me and tell me we'll do it together. Yours sincerely, the children. Now, I'm a massive okay. believer that you know we will we will, we are here to teach you and guide you and nurture you to make you the best person you can possibly be you're not you're not going to be behind we will catch you up you're you know we will we will we leave that to us we're the adults we will be the ones that will support you and do what we need to do what we want you to be is happy and we want you to be comfortable and we want you to feel that sense that actually you can achieve anything and you can yeah. and all it is 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 we will we will do the work to support you in any way we can the changes to exams i see it as an opportunity you know we exams are extremely stressful for many of us including myself the fact that we can um, go through coursework and work together and keep building up a portfolio of evidence is actually an amazing opportunity some people like exams and later on in the year, maybe you can sit that exam again if you really want to. But for me, I think this is the perfect opportunity to, to get, get that stuff done. I just think it's taken that exam pressure away from us. So I'm looking at it, at it from a really positive angle that this is brilliant for you guys. And, you know, it's a chance to reset and a chance to kind of really get settled in. And we will support you and help you through that. Yeah, and not to be afraid to talk to us and to your peers, to your friends as well and your families about how you might be having these negative um, feelings and emotions because that's all they are. They're just thoughts yeah. and um, we can turn them around if we know about them. We can help you to turn them around. And also I think what you're not expecting that you'll find really positive is that everyone's feeling the same. Yeah. The whole so world's feeling the same. The whole world's feeling the same. The it's world. not, it's really not just you. So I think that's going to be something that'll be a real relief actually when you're back in school and, and surrounded by you know other students and the people that are in your, your age age range. Um yeah. okay. Just flicking through those again before we move on. So 
just to remember then that there are different things in school that are there to help you manage all of these emotions, help you self-regulate. And one of them is to remember your protective behaviours. And it's we're up, North East is a protective behaviours school. It's um, not just about having protective behaviours sessions one to one. It's a whole school approach to making sure that we all have the right to feel safe all of the time and that we can talk with someone about anything, even if it feels awful or small. And yeah. you should all know by now. And if you don't, we will help you to to revisit your networks of safe adults. Um, and that includes your families, your parents and carers, maybe your friends, parents and carers too, and your tutor and other students in your group. And when I say group, that might be your friendship group. It might be your tutor group because uh, they might be feeling it too. Yeah. OK, so just remember that. And also remember to look out for each other. And um, do you want to talk through, do you remember the zones of regulation, everyone? Yeah, the zones of regulation. Now, this is something um, that, that works really well for our students. And a, a, a lot of you will really have it embedded that before you come into a lesson, you know, the teacher checks what zone you're in just to see how you are. And it's a great way to recognise how you're feeling. And then the teacher or the adult or whoever you you're with can put things in place so to make sure that you you move out of a, a negative zone or a blue zone or out of a red zone and so one thing that's really important is I, I really want you practicing what zone you're in how you're feeling because if we can recognize what zone we're in and um, the people around you and yourself and we can put measures in place to help support you um, and I think that's really important. So that's something that's really important to get to green. And we, we like you being in green all the time. Yeah. And people say when they're in green, they feel more in control. Mm. They feel more ready to listen, ready to learn. And it feels like a much safer space to be in. So everybody wants to be in the green zone. And it might be that it takes it takes different things for different people. And, um, you know, just to sort of get used to the language again, try practicing at home, thinking, what zone am I in? Ask other people, what zone are you in, mom? You know, yes. and, and think about, you know, how how can I move towards green? How, how might you move towards green, mom? Because we all have different ways of getting there. So get used to using that sort of language and, and asking yourselves that in, in preparation. Um, and last but not least, underpinning everything at North East is that North East is a restorative school and works with restorative practice. So can you just explain a bit more about that, Mr. Tuxman? Yeah, I think one of the most important things and the reason we're a restorative school is because we believe that communication is paramount to um, dealing with conflict, to helping support students, to um, finding solutions to any problem that might arise. And so um, we, we take this approach as part of our policy. If there has been an issue, whether it's between two people, whether it's between, uh, you know, even an internal issue, the, the way we deal with it is to talk about it. And it's a no blame thing. Um, it's, it's something that will give us the opportunity to talk, to understand why something's happened, how why we behaved in a certain way and how we might have made another person feel or vice versa and it's there to kind of really improve our communication skills but also prevent harmful behavior it resolves conflict we we do get a lot of time where situations may occur and because of the needs of our students this can a situation with another student or a teacher or anything can build up in their mind and it can become something much bigger than, than actually the initial thing that might have happened. So as a school, it's really important, and this is uh, as our whole school community, that any conflict is actually resolved and we, we talk about it. So things don't escalate and they become bigger issues than they are. Yeah. And it's addressed yeah. as a whole school community. You know, it's something really important for the whole school. Yes, and it can work between adults and students as mm. well. Um, I think one of the things that students often have reflected to us is that they don't feel they can have peace of mind if yeah. they're going home at the end of the day with something that's happened that hasn't been resolved or that is yeah. playing out in their mind. So it's also um, a way of understanding what's happened 
and I think you can you can kind of accept things better if you understand them and the way to Definitely. understand them is to hear the viewpoint of the other person what was going on for them why they behaved in the way they did towards you or why they reacted and you can explain yourself and in that we find that students at North East are brilliant and really skilled with, with having a safe adult there to help at talking together and actually being able yeah. to be really honest with one another and then being able to let things go. Because I think, you know, in the main, most conflict that happens can be resolved. And Without it, doubt. And is not deliberate harm from somebody else. And, you know... And we can also pick out whether there are other underlying issues going on for somebody that might be causing them to behave in a certain way we weren't aware of. So I think just remember that we are a restorative school and that this this approach is something that really builds the community and, mm. uh, and, and builds on the strengths of the school. And positive relationships. And it's something that you will take from school into the wider world you know when you go out and you go to college and then you go to university and then you you know you're going to work these skills are skills that you're actually going to have for life um because you know an issue might happen um in in your workplace and some someone might have upset you by saying something and you can't just walk away and go right that's it i've had enough it has to be resolved and that's that's what we're here to help and support and to teach you to do yeah and it's not just about an apology it's about no. actually it's about understanding it's about empathy it's about developing those social communication skills about what might be going on for another person which might explain why they behaved in a certain way or did something or didn't do something so it's really helpful it really is a skill for life so all there is left to say is just get practicing remembering these yeah. things uh, please subscribe to the school youtube channel if you haven't already and share that with your friends and family because it might help students in other places too and uh, if you want to post any comments they are turned off for everybody's safety on youtube but you can post your comments on the school facebook page because we also do post this uh, to facebook so yeah have a nice weekend um, definitely and we can't wait to have you all back yeah and uh, yeah and enjoy the lovely weather everybody and we'll see you next week lovely see you later bye bye miss tuxford bye bye miss charmer thank you